Welcome to Digital Hospitality. I am your host, Sean Walcheff. This is a Cali BBQ Media production. Every single week, we talk about digital hospitality. That is our ongoing thesis that every business needs to be digital first and every business needs to be in the hospitality business. Now, what exactly does that mean? It means that traditionally offline businesses, especially restaurants, bars, product businesses, anything that's brick and mortar typically have ignored the internet. Obviously with the pandemic, it's accelerated people's need to fix their website, to go mobile first, to start using social media. Uh, we're very fortunate that we've turned our barbecue business into a media company. And now through this podcast, through the content we create for YouTube, we teach all the things that we've learned along the way. And we have guests on who share their stories and through their stories, you, the listener can improve your business. So if you're a first time listener, welcome to the show. We've got an incredible guest today that can share their uh, digital hospitality journey. Uh, but more importantly, if you've been listening to the show for a long time, we're grateful for you to for being here. We're grateful that you share the show. We're grateful that you subscribe. Um, this is your show. Uh, I've been huge recently on Clubhouse. It is an app that allows this podcast to come alive. So I get to meet people that listen to the show. We get to interact on a deeper level. You can present on topics. We have a digital hospitality room that I suggest you go and follow. Follow the room. Let me know that you want to host a room um, within that. Uh, we'd love to have you do that. And follow me, Sean P. Walchef. But more importantly, um, follow our guest today. Our guest was on Clubhouse. We did a virtual Ghost Kitchen Clubhouse with Chef Chenson Cummings, who was a guest on this podcast, also with Kyle and Sarah, who was also a guest on this podcast. So a bunch of podcasters getting together to talk about virtual kitchens, ghost kitchens, friendly ghost kitchens. Uh, but more importantly, our guest today, Josh House, he was it was his first Clubhouse call. So uh, Josh House, the owner of At Pickles and Bones Barbecue in Milford, Illinois, also opening At Hail the Biscuit. Um, his personal handle is at Chef Josh House 01. Uh, Josh, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks, Sean. I appreciate you having me on today, man. So, what did you think of the Clubhouse experience? Give me I your thought it was, take. I thought it was, I thought it was cool, man. I, I like. Um, I'm a big podcast guy, and I, I like that's that's how I learn is by listening. Um, obviously, from coming from a chef background, hands on is is my best way. But um, growing up as a kid, reading books. I always wanted to feel like there was more there for me to learn. And I never felt like I got enough out of it. But now as I've transitioned later in life to listening to podcasts and really audio books, I've, I've come to realize how, how valuable and how important the audio experience is for me to learn. So I really enjoy the clubhouse and, you know, always being curious, always learning. That's a great way just to listen to other people kind of go back and forth, bounce ideas off of each other. And it's a, we're all in this together. We're all trying to adjust a mile a minute to that, how everything is moving. I just think it's a cool way to kind of get a big group of people together across the country and, and talk about stuff that we're all thinking about. Yeah, I appreciate that. And it's, it's cool for me because it feels like people that are like-minded find each other and the internet yep. has allowed us to do that in a much easier way, whether it's on Instagram, people following, you know, a podcaster or people following barbecue or people following somebody that's doing something in restaurants somebody doing that something in digital marketing, digital media, content creation, no matter what your passion is, you can find your tribe. And uh, Clubhouse is kind of just bringing that to life in a way that some of those other platforms don't do it. Because if you hear somebody that's engaging on Clubhouse, you can click on their profile and then you can follow them on Instagram. You can send them a DM on Instagram and start a conversation to say, hey, I appreciate what you said about ghost kitchens. Do you have any more information? And that can lead to something further on down the line. I mean, the people that are in these clubhouse rooms are significant. I mean, we're talking about CEOs, founders, people that are movers and shakers, and people that just want to learn. So if you want to learn, this is the place for you. Um, we highly suggest that you get on clubhouse, Josh, I look forward to you hosting clubhouse, but let's get back to the, the business of barbecue. Um, yeah. <laughs> most many people would love to get into the barbecue business. Tell, tell me how you got into the barbecue business. Well, so I, I started off, um, you know, I've been a chef my whole life. I've been started the similar story to everybody else, started washing dishes, making pizzas when I was 14 and a half and really fell in love with it then, went to college, tried the traditional route because I thought that's what I should do, quickly realized that college wasn't for me, but I started working in restaurants and really just fell in love with restaurants from every part of it, whether that was serving tables, cooking, hosting, whatever it was, washing dishes, I loved all of it, uh, you know, 
15 years later, I'm a professional chef in Cincinnati, Lebanon, Ohio, where Tony Bunce uh, operates. Um, Love Tony. Tony's amazing. And, Historic yeah, I was barbecue. There. Yeah, Tony Bunce, awesome guy. Historic barbecue, awesome, awesome company. Uh, so I was a chef at the Golden Lamb in Lebanon, Ohio, which is Ohio's oldest operating uh, inn and restaurant. It opened in 1803. So it's really cool. And my wife and I, you know, we're cooking on the side on the weekends, um, you know, hanging out and started reading an article in Cincinnati Magazine about the best barbecue in Cincinnati. Uh, we had already purchased a food trailer and we weren't sure what we were going to do. So we started kind of going around, checking out all these places. And one thing I think when you're a chef, um, you try a lot of stuff and then you automatically think like, well, this is what I would do, or this is how I would do it. Or, and it doesn't make it better or worse. Barbecue is one of the, to me, one of the most objective things that there is out there. But we just thought like, you know, I think what we do is really good. Um, and I think in our community, there's nothing remotely close to this. So we bought, a, we had the trailer, we, you know, we tore it apart, we, we rebuilt it out. And then we set up in a parking lot around from our house. <laughs> it sounds crazy now thinking back, it's been almost, because we just hit our five year anniversary of being open full time. But we started as a side hustle on Sundays when I was off work. So we did like, I think we did 12 Sundays in a row in 2015. Um, kind of as like a, we had to try it in some capacity before I just jumped off and quit my job and do it, start doing this full time. So we had like 12 Sundays, we had great feedback. We found a parking lot in our neighborhood. Um, I, I found the person through the auditor site, found out where they lived, went to their house, dropped off a letter and said, hey, I see you own this empty parking lot. Can we rent it for our barbecue business? We'll put in an electrical pole. And the biggest thing that we did was we operated in the same location every day. Um, one thing that I always loved about the food trucks and uh, one thing I didn't like when I, when I was following them and thinking about doing it was like, you would have this great meal, but then they're on the opposite side of the town tomorrow. So there was no continuity. And I, I really felt like if we were going to be successful, we had to be part of the community from the, from the beginning. So we put an electrical pole in, we parked our food trailer there. And for, we stayed in one spot for a year and a half. We moved across the street for six months and then we opened a brick and mortar was a just a shade after 18 months after we opened our food trailer and then we just celebrated our five-year anniversary we're carry out and catering operation here in milford we cook old school barbecue outside stick burners um uh, red oak white oak and that's it man and just salt pepper and good quality meat and, and and try to make things simple my wife and i have a, a fine dining background and we've tried to bring that attention to detail and appreciation to the barbecue game and i think uh, you know, I think the results have shown that people appreciate what we do and we're really excited about being a, our goal was always to establish ourselves as like a pillar of our community. We didn't want to just take, we wanted to be here. So, you know, part of our mission statement is to give back. And I feel very proud and fortunate that we've been able to do that. Even from our days in the trailer, we hosted dine out nights when we were a little tiny eight by 12 food trailer where we would give 20% back to the schools or any other nonprofit that we could, we could partner with. And I feel that's the thing I'm most proud about being able to do since we've opened. Love that. Um, I'd love to take you back. I saw an Instagram post uh, on your feed uh, at pickles and bones, BBQ. Um, you talked about Dale and Connie Jennings, oh, yeah. Papa's pizza palace. Yep. Uh, can you talk about the importance of mentorship? Well, I think that, when you see somebody else that's been through it, it, you know that even when it's hard, that there's there's another there's another side to get to. Like you're going to push through the hard stuff, and you've seen people that um, that started in from a place the same as you. Um, you know they have the same you know the same Midwestern values that we kind of have grown up with. You know Dale and Connie went to they went to school with my dad. They were kind enough to give me my first job. They were the first entrepreneurs that I ever had surrounded myself with. And I didn't, I had no real concept of that before. I had always thought that I was going to go to school and then I was going to go to college or whatever. And then I was going to end up getting a job and work doing whatever. I had no idea what I was going to do. And that was the first time that I saw like, oh, there's an opportunity out there to work for myself. Um, I started kicking around the idea from seeing them of like, oh, maybe one day I'll open a bar that'll have food, but I'm definitely not going to be the cook. This chef stuff, this this cooking business is too much, so much work. 
and out here, here we are 25 years later, but um, seeing those people and seeing somebody else that you know, that's been through it, um, I think is, is reassuring and it helps, it helps provide that motivation that like, yeah, today's hard, but we're going to get through today and tomorrow is going to be a better day. And we're one step closer to continuing to learn more and, and become better, better leaders, better operators, better owners. Uh, but, but seeing them do it was really, like I said, that was my first time I ever had ever even thought about that there was an opportunity to, to work for myself. Yeah, I think it's important for anybody that's listening to this podcast is that you, you never know whose life you're going to impact. So it's so important every single day to put your best foot forward and to be the best leader that you can be. Because, I mean, they inspired you, which now you're inspiring the next generation. Tom, who works for you, was out on vacation in San Diego. You sent me a DM on Instagram and said, hey, Tom's coming out there. Um, you know, I listened to the podcast. I would love, you know, if you have if you have time, I'd love for you to, you know, say hi. And for me, anybody that reaches out, that listens to this podcast, like I said, we're so grateful that you listen to this podcast, no matter what business you're in. Um, and especially if you come to San Diego, I would... Uh, more I'll drop everything if I have enough time as long as I don't have any conflicts I will come and, and meet them there but I got to meet Tom you know I got to learn right. about Tom and find out you know why he was compelled to work for you and what his plans are and got to show him around you know the restaurant and one of the things I was teaching him is you know I'm showing you around don't be afraid to get your smartphone out and ask to take video right you know <laughs> like sometimes I mean you as long as you ask the question, a lot right. of owner, owner operators aren't media people like me. Like I've made right. myself a media company. I've, I've literally created that own identity, but you, you have to ask the question, ask for permission, right? You know, because if somebody's willing to show you around now, especially in the age of social media and, and media, media content is create the content, but use that video because, you know, that's the story. You know, the story okay. is now he's been here. Now he knows um, about us, you know, about us. Um, you have people that work for you that you're inspiring to work at your next concept. But why, what compelled you to want to open up another restaurant? Uh, I'm a, well, we're, I'm a glutton for punishment, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but yes. I, 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 I don't, the, the process of opening something to me is like, I'm going to be excited when we finally get open. But there's going to be a little bit part, there's going to be a small part of me that's disappointed that we're open because the process of getting there will be over. Now, then yeah. there'll be a new process to create, like, how do we get better every day? But part of the fun is, like, I mean, we looked for real estate for two and a half years. We were actually, the day that the governor here shut everything down in March last year, the 17th, we were getting ready to go sign an L, decide between two different properties and sign an LOI on one of them. And it just how it happened. We said, you know, let's wait. And we got lucky that a new building came available a mile and a half from here. Uh, we've always been passionate about biscuits. We did, we did four pop-ups here um, of All Hail the Biscuit in 2019. And we had planned to do more last year. Obviously, that was um, kind of curtailed by the, by the pandemic. So we weren't able to do that. But we wanted to, we wanted to do it the same way we started Pickles and Bones was Look, we have we have this the building, we have our space here. Let's try it and let's see what happens. And it was kind of shocking because I think I always we always look at it and be like, well, I don't know. We're gonna try it. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. And as far as the pop-up, and we had like 20 biscuits here to start the first pop-up. You know, we did a Facebook event, everything. There was like 25 people that said they would show up. There was a line of like 40 people here. The first thing we opened, we had 20 biscuits ready. The first person ordered 10. It was a shit show. <laughs> like we put awesome. up like this, we put up the it. we put up the sold out sign in like 15 minutes. I love and it. You had a bunch so, of pissed off people. Welcome to the know, biscuit business. But but they weren't pissed off because they it was crazy. That's what I thought. I thought like uh, we 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 screwed this. We 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 tried. We didn't prepare. But everybody, we reached out to everybody. We. We were part of the conversation talking about digital hospitality. We were part of the conversation from the beginning. Like, Hey, look, I'm the first one to, to, to point the finger at myself. And so I'm a big, dumb idiot. I made a mistake. <laughs> we should have done this. We should have done better. And people understood. Now, if people yeah. came back the other, the next three times and it was the same thing, but interesting enough, the next three pop-ups we did, 
there was lines around the building when we started. Now, it's not some crazy, this isn't some crazy New York City cronut type line, but it was, for us, it was awesome. But we learned that, oh man, there's a higher expectation for what we're gonna put out there. So the next time we had coloring pages for the kids, we had bubbles, we had cornhole set up in the parking lot, like anything and everything to continue to provide hospitality on site, even though we only have a little tiny carryout space. So that was really, that. that was really motivation enough for us to say like, we have something here. Um, let's find a way to, let's find a way to, to, to put it into a brick and mortar location. And we looked and looked and looked and we got, we were so happy when we found the building here, it's about a mile and a half from where pickles and bones is. And it was the first time we found a location that felt right. Like this is, we have to make it right here. It has to be here. Do you know this, our community supported us when the pandemic hit, our community supported us like gangbusters. It was amazing. And we were lucky through just the simple fact that we didn't have the resources from the beginning to open up a place with indoor dining that we only had carry out and carry out options. So we didn't have to get rid of tables. We also didn't have indoor real estate that we were trying to, that we were paying for. And we have a thousand square feet here. All we had to do was take the chairs out of the front and we, we were really lucky, uh, but the support was amazing. And it really made us know that we have to stay close to home. Um, let's put another, let's put another business in our community. Let's not let this building go to, and uh, there, there's no bad develop, but you know, let's not let it turn into something else that we don't want to see in the community. Let's be part of the solution. Oh, let's always try to be part of the solution. And, and let's not complain about how there's another car wash. We have the, we have the ability. Let's go find this. Let's put a restaurant here for the community. I love that. And I hope the listeners, I hope you guys heard what he said. And that was use the line to their advantage. And they did that through hospitality. And the hospitality is providing memorable moments. There's a book by Chip Heath and Dan Heath called The Power of Moments. That's a good um, one. Absolutely incredible book. Um, I've, I'm rereading it again because it's so powerful. But when you think about making memorable moments and you think about the little thing, the little cost that it takes to buy a coloring book or even borrow a coloring book and to yeah. get crayons and to bring it out, it's the thoughtfulness that will go and it'll be part of the story that someone tells them and their friends on Instagram, on Facebook, in real life, all hail the biscuit. You can't believe they had bubbles for my kids. Right. My, my wife is in Bulgaria with our four-year-old and our two-year-old. She brought bubbles from the United States, a bubble maker. <laughs> and literally my kids are the most popular kids in the village. Nice. Never underestimate the power of bubbles. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, um, and all those, and all those people that, and, and, and the interesting thing, just to talk more about like the, the digital aspect of that is that we could have gone out front and tried to talk to every person we're deep in the weeds trying to to get our heads out of our ass and make biscuits but for us to go on facebook which is our most has been our, our most um useful platform always um but for us to go on there and be part of the conversation and engage the people that were here was huge because the 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 overwhelming response was yeah i had to wait longer than i wanted but it was great it was delicious you took care of us, you apologized, you understood. And that went further with people than anything else that we ever could. Then, then if they would have came in, everything just would have been flawless. It wouldn't have been th that power of moment stuff that that never would have happened. Yeah. Now, granted, the, the times after that, you know, we, we executed better and we got better at what we were doing from a, um, from a systems standpoint. But the hospitality, the first time, even though it was, a, in my mind, it was a a failure of execution, the hospitality, it couldn't have been better. Yeah, correct. Can you get into the, the actual technical aspects of, of your Facebook strategy? Is it your wife that's going live? Are you going live? Who's, who's actually? My wife, my wife normally, so like any type of like advertising stuff, anytime with that, my wife is the one that, that works with all that stuff. As far as like trying to post content and create and videos and stuff like that, normally that's me. Um, okay. or, or if you see an extremely, extremely nice photograph, that's my wife. <laughs> my wife did that. <laughs> and if you see one that that looks like the person, behind, it was a behind the scenes photo. A behind the scenes photo. It's this guy right here. Yeah, that's my 100%. wife. Like, hey, 
hey dummy you think you could wipe the grease off of your camera before you take a picture of something i'm That's getting hilarious. i'm getting better but i also but i also know that like the truth resonates like people appreciate the fact that like hey i'm just taking a picture in the kitchen yep. of something behind the scenes people really appreciate that yeah i i do want to put a plug on every friday at 2 p.m on clubhouse we're doing our digital hospitality leadership call so we talk about smartphone storytelling secrets uh toby who's part of our team now uh, he shared on the last call one tip for food photography and video which is to bring a small cloth like you'd have for your glasses and keep it to wipe the lens. And I'm like, literally, I have 50,000 photos. I have 9,000 videos on my phone. Never once have I taken a cloth to wipe the lens. Right. So let's do the user a little bit of justice. But back to your point, don't prevent that from posting. Right. So don't don't oh. use it as a crutch, but it's a great hack and it's a great thing to do. So yeah. use that tiny piece of cloth and uh, wipe the lens, which I need to keep re reminding myself to do. Uh, you said something earlier about your background as a chef and your wife being in fine dining and you wanted to bring fine dining, uh, the fine dining experience to barbecue. Can you elaborate on that? I think to... To me, fine dining, bringing the fine dining experience is just the, it's really like the attention to detail. Um, and that, that goes from sourcing the products from not taking shortcuts. You know, we have a, a one of our, you know, kind of our core values is like we, we, necker, we never sacrifice quality for profit and we never sacrifice uh, qu quality for convenience. So part of that fine dining thing is, you know, some of the fine dining aspects, you know, whether it's perfectly diced onions and stuff like that. Some of that kind of stuff I think is a little bit overrated for, for barbecue, but you know, we only use prime brisket. That's something that uh, we just won't serve it. Uh, I, I've tried other stuff. I'm just not happy with it. And I, I won't be able to sleep at night if I know that I put out something that was inferior to what, what, to what my standard and what our standard is. So it's, it's sourcing the right stuff. And it's an, it's the quality of, people that we have in our, in our, in working at Pickles and Bones, like it takes, as you know, making great barbecue takes a lot of skill. It takes a lot of work. You know, we make everything in house, every sauce, all the sides, all the dressings, everything. So a lot of the other cooks that are here have worked with me, worked with me at the Golden Lamb, have been fine dining cooks in the past. And it's kind of puts everybody on that same level of like, there is no shortcut. You can now you can find a more efficient way to do stuff. That's not the same thing as a shortcut. The shortcut's finding a, a way to, to to make an inferior product to make it easier on yourself. And I think that's really like the fine dining touch where it comes in is just like we never allow that to happen. We always have the highest the highest standard. You know, every morning, every morning at ten thirty, we put up a half sheet tray with a little bit of every single thing, even if and we taste it every single day. Everybody in the kitchen tries it together, and it doesn't matter if if I think something's off or if the new dishwasher thinks something's off, it's an opportunity to say, like, I, the green beans don't taste the same today as they did yesterday. And it, that's kind of the part of the attention to detail. I think that comes from a, a fine dining background because whether you're paying $15 for a meal of barbecue from us, to me, it's no different than when I was working fine dining and you're paying $200 for a five course tasting menu. It's the same level of care that goes into it. Love that. That's a, that's a great answer. So I know recently you launched a podcast as a chef, a barbecue restaurant owner, someone that's opening up another concept. Uh, why would you, why would you start a podcast? Well, I, I, I always wanted to, I always thought that, and I, and I listened, I listened to you honestly, and was like, you know what, there, I have no excuse. I was out of excuses of why not to do it. Um, I bought the equipment and then, and then, you know, the catch all like, well, now we're in COVID and we were busier than ever last year, yeah. last year was our busiest year. And I've had a hard, I've had a hard time. Um, it, even accepting that I don't even like to say it out loud because I know so many restaurants struggled and it's hard for me to like, have somewhat of survivor's guilt of having a great year. But part of that was like, well, let's do this podcast. Um, I wanted to do it. Like I said, I like listening. I like audio. That's my favorite medium. And I had Tom Schnegelsberger, who's a, you know, a young man that's working with us, that's coming up with us, who's a marketing major. And my job as a leader is to find opportunities for people. And if we don't create opportunities, we're going to lose the great people that we have. And Tom, 
Tom wasn't necessarily a restaurant guy, but he's, he's turning into a restaurant guy. And I said, you know, you want to help me with this podcast? I know you're a marketing major. I don't know anything about it. I don't know how to record it. Let's buy some equipment. Let's just figure it out. If we do it and we don't like the audio quality, we'll record a couple episodes. We'll, we'll, um, we'll get better equipment, whatever it is. And early last year, uh, yeah, it's hard to believe it so long ago, but we had a, um, a member of the Cincinnati restaurant community who was very well known, who's very um, well respected, um, pass away. Um, and it really hit home, I think, for a lot of us that even weren't necessarily, you know, I wasn't close with this individual, but it really made us start thinking about and having the conversation about mental health um, in all industries, but in the restaurant industry, um, you know, we just, we just went, we just passed the, the anniversary of Anthony Bourdain's passing. And I think that, I think that if Anthony Bourdain were still here today, I think he would be advocating even more so for mental health and having a platform for us all to start talking about that. Because I think he knows that the, this hard drinking, hard partying asshole chef of the last 20 years, that, that stuff is gone, man. There's no place for that. So part of the podcast was just, let's bring some guests on and let's have that be part of the conversation. Um, I don't think it's, it hasn't ever been anything that we want to, or it is going to take up all of the, all of the talking points, but I think it's important for people to like, just get it out there and be like, yeah, you know, we, we all struggle, um, on the day to day, you know, as they say, like it's low, it's lonely at the top, but I think we need to, I think we need to find a way to get rid of that, that kind of moniker also, because we have opportunities like this now with technology to reach out to people. Like I, I DM'd you and I knew that from listening to, to your podcast, I knew that you would message me back. I had no doubt in my mind. There was no, <laughs> I better <laughs> yeah, I talk you, about it all you, the fucking time. Right. But you know what I mean? You, you would, yeah. some people you would think like, like if I if I DM LeBron James, he's probably not going to message me back. Yeah, he's he's got a couple more DMs in his <laughs> box. <laughs> right. But but like I, but I expected, and that's a cool thing about. I felt you know I I kind of joked on the message with you like I felt like I had I'd heard your voice so much on the uh, podcast that I that when you called me back like I I recognized who it was immediately. Yeah. It was a it was a um a comforting kind of sense of like hey I don't I don't know Sean. But I, but I seem to know some something about him, and I think the audio, the podcast, like getting to really know each other and just be be vulnerable and be authentic. Um, you now we've always said like we cook authentic barbecue, and I think at the end of the day, like our our digital presence needs to be authentic. Also, like we need to just put it out there. Like um, I need to use less foul language than I do in my everyday life, <laughs> but. But other than that, you know, I don't, I'm not going to, we're not going to talk about anything I don't, I don't believe in or don't think about or struggle with, or, you know, it's not going to be, it's just kind of a, a place to talk and chat and go back and forth. And the cool thing about having someone like Tom is that he's 12 years younger than me, 14 years younger than me, something like that. So he's got a completely different perspective. He's grown up in it where we, him and I were talking said, you've never been anywhere in your life without having a smartphone with you. Yeah. You've never been any, you've never, I went to college my freshman year. I didn't have a smart, I didn't have a phone. Yeah. I didn't have a cell phone. I went to college two hours from home and thought, I don't need it. I don't need a cell phone for anything. I'll, I'll have prepaid phone cards to yep. call people on, but it's just crazy. Um, but it's a really cool way to have a different perspective from just like, especially also I, I come from just the restaurant industry. So I don't know a lot but I find myself learning the most from people outside of the restaurant industry because the perspective is different. But the commonality is that we all go out to eat. We've all had dining experiences, but learning like Jerry Saltz, the art, the, the, the art critic, I, I find his stuff really interesting. And like his 33 rules to being an artist is really interesting for like, for chefs and creatives and entrepreneurs. So. So if I can, if we can, even I said, like I said, even if my mom and Tom's mom are the only people that listen to the podcast when we do it, like that's cool with me. But you know, we've had a couple guests on, and uh, him and I just after his return from San Diego, where he was very, he was very fired up, which was awesome. We uh, we <laughs> yeah, started saying I'm happy every, I got him fired up. 
Yeah, every every Tuesday night after we close, we're going to record a podcast and then we're going to publish it two days later every every single week. So I love that, it. Was, that was my commitment that I made to you was to make sure once a week That's we're right. publishing, publishing. So it was, yeah. it was awesome motivation. Well, anybody listening to this podcast, it doesn't matter if you're in the barbecue business, restaurant business, if, if you commit to North Star content, so something that is pillar content, whether that's in video form or audio form, or preferably both, but you make that commitment that once a week, no matter what, I'm going to do a five minute video about who I am, what I do, why I do it, a little bit of behind the scenes and make that video, not for a thousand people, not for a hundred thousand people, make it for yourself. Make it for who were you five years before when you were ready to launch, when you were thinking, I really want to open up this restaurant, make that video of all the things that have happened in the last five years to get to where you are. That's the problem with content creation is we all want to have a hundred million people watching our stuff when ultimately we're trying to build a small community of like-minded people, the rising tide lifts all ships. So make that pillar of content and commit to that lifelong learning journey of the craft the craft of content creation, the craft of getting comfortable talking to a microphone, getting comfortable talking to your smartphone, getting comfortable going live. If you don't do it, you'll never get good at it. And it's always our own ego. It's getting out of the way of our own ego, expecting that somebody else is going to tell our story. Somebody else, there's another magazine, there's a newspaper, there's a reporter, there's a journalist, there's a TV anchor. Somebody's going to come in and they're going to tell our story and our story is going to go viral and we're going to run a successful business. Well, guess what? It doesn't work like that. I spent five years getting ignored by all the local media. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do it ourselves. Like I'm going to write my own press release that got ignored. I figured out, you know, can I hire a PR firm? That was way too expensive. And I said, fuck it. We're just going to go all in on the smartphone. Literally anything and everything that we can do. Video, audio, written word and images do it on a consistent basis, do it daily, learn from people, ask questions. And guess what? Every single day, every single week, every single month, every single year, things have gotten different. The platforms have changed. But ultimately, if you get down, it's smartphone storytelling. So how do you tell your story? How do you learn how to tell your hook point, who you are and what you do? Because if you learn how to do that, then you can learn how to tell other people's stories. You can start to, you're talking about digital media, social media marketing, where you're talking about you, your brand, your product, your service. But once you learn how to do that craft, now you can talk about your vendors. Now you can talk about the charities. Now you can talk about your village. And it's no longer about you, you're creating media content. So I'm really happy to hear that you guys have committed to that craft. Um, We're gonna put a link in the show notes um, about the podcast, because I think that's uh, that's very powerful. And I'm very happy to hear that. How do you work with your wife? (laughs) <laughs> loaded question uh would you like I, my- I work i work with my wife too she's she's been she's, uh, she's going to be coming back to the workforce uh to the galley barbecue media team um she's she's been an incredible mom taking care of both my son and my daughter but i'm very excited to have her come back but i, I love for you to to talk about how how it is in the hospitality business working with your significant other uh it's it's good because we my wife will challenge me more than anybody else will, which is great. Um, I don't always, admittedly, I don't always take that very well. Sometimes I take it better, better than other days. Um, but I know that she it w- will challenge me because she's probably the only other one that's, that's not scared of me that, uh, that will, that will tell me when she thinks I could do better. I could be a better leader. I could be a better dad a better husband like um and i'll do the same for her but i'm very i'm very intrinsically motivated and i'm very hard on myself so if something goes wrong i will i will always take the blame and sometimes my wife does it not sometimes my wife nicole will she does a better job of saying like look you you need to you need to delegate some of the blame also and figure out do, is this a is this an error by that we've chose to do something wrong? Do we not have the right standards in place, or are you just taking all of this on your shoulders because it's easier than having a tough conversation with somebody? So she challenges me um, in ways that other people that really can't, um, and we also can push each other. And she has she has far she's much much better cook um, than I 
ever could be or ever would be. Um, she, she's a, an amazing cook. I'm better at operations. So it balances each other out. And as much as I like creating food and, and coming up with specials and stuff like that, she's really good at, at saying like, it, this is missing this. Almost all the recipes from Pickles and Bones from the beginning um, were stuff that she worked out while I was at, at work. You know, she would work on stuff at home. I'd come home, we'd try it. But almost all of that stuff is stuff that she's created just because she has a, she's an amazing cook and obviously amazing mother and an unbelievable wife to have to put up and deal with me who's constantly like for years, you know, we're in the trailer and I'm like, okay, we have to get into brick and mortar uh, because we need, we need more space to operate. And then we're in a brick and mortar. Like, okay. We need, we need to either expand. We need to do something different. We need to keep looking and I'm looking I'm talking to, you know, I, I will always listen to an opportunity because I want to learn something about it. You know, whether it's a food hall here, ghost kitchen here, like even if I know it might not be the right thing, I still want to listen and learn because I know that there's a, some kind of lesson in there and it's going to help give me better experience for the next time we have a conversation. So she kind of lets me chase all of that kind of stuff around, but then always kind of gets me focused back in. I'm like, okay, now that's good. You have to stop messing with that. We need to work on this, but she's, we, we work better now than we did before. I think before we had, we were both chefs. So it's like you have two chef personalities trying to kind of collide. Um, but now we've kind of, we've kind of uh, divvied up the work a little bit, the workload a little bit, and it has kind of helped. And then I know that we kind of know the stuff that each other is, each other's strong points and each other's weak points and try to lift each other up. And then also, we also never let, um, we also never let each other get too big of a head, which is something that I, we try not to like. Um, I remember every negative review we've ever had, even, even though they're few and far between, but I could be hard to tell you about the last positive when we had, even though it was probably two days, you know, it's just, sure. I, I'm very hard on myself and it's good. But that's also, you also have to be able to take a step back and be like, you know what, we're doing a really good job and we're, we're doing the best to build a great business, provide opportunity for people and doing it the right way and hopefully grooming and teaching other young people to come up. So we trying to kind of keep each other in check. She keeps me in check more, more though, but <laughs> <laughs> every good wife does. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I appreciate the fact you talked about mental health. It's something we, we talk about frequently on the podcast um, because it's something that isn't talked about a lot in hospitality. Um, as men, as leaders, as dads, as husbands, uh, it's hard for us to get vulnerable in front of the microphone, in front of video. Um, I've shared my struggles with my, my weight. I've straight, shared struggles that I'm an alcoholic that owns a bar. It's been in a program of recovery. Um, every single day I work on my sunrise gratitude routine, trying to be a better man, um, you know, working on reading, working on working out, working on spending time listening to my music before I spend time being a better dad and being a better husband and being a better leader and being a better podcaster and being better in media. Um, what are the things that are you're, you're currently struggling with and what are you working on? Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Um, I mean, my weight stuff, stuff I've always struggled with, especially now just uh, getting older, like, and the wear and tear that this business puts on your body. Um, just trying to actually, I've spent the last like two and a half months really just focusing in on what I put in my body as far as eating. Cause I'd spend the day in the kitchen and I started, I started using Noom, uh, just yep. to try it out. Yeah, and that's a great app. I'm it was really, Noom. it was really helpful for me to see days where I'm just smashing a pound of brisket uh, without even thinking about it. And obviously you spend a lot of time tasting food, but um, you need to be conscious of what it is. It's really hard in the restaurant business to just come in and just pound through that stuff. But for me, the two biggest things are just really being a better father and being a better husband. Um, and I think they go hand in hand, um, but being present with my kids um, I have a, th I have three daughters are 11, nine and seven. Wow. And you're here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it seemed like yesterday that my oldest daughter was four years old. Yeah. You know, I blinked my eye. And so, you know, yesterday, like 
I feel like we're always just going from one thing to the next. It's swimming to this, to that. You know, we've been working on this Airbnb and like one thing to another. And yesterday I was just like, we just went out to lunch. We went to Target. We went to the pool. Like we didn't do shit. We had no schedule, like, and it was beautiful. And, and same thing, like with my wife, you know, we were up at the, at the, at the, at the uh, lake house on Sunday. And I was like, just stay up here, Mm -hmm. stay up here, get some rest with no kids. Like, and to me, that's, to me, that's being a good husband. (laughs) It was just like, stay up here, like have some time for yourself. Cause I think one thing that we, as, as parents and husband and wife, like sometimes we don't take enough time just for ourselves. Like you were saying, like to listen to your music, to like really be present, like for yourself. I think you get so wrapped up. I know I get wrapped up in like, what are my kids worried about? I'm not there. My wife's worried about me not being there. And then you have the guilt of not being at work, which I'm doing a better job of not letting that go. Cause got to just let the people that you put the right people in place and let them do their job. But I know I struggle with like the guilt of like how, if I'm supposed to be 10 places at once, if I'm not here, but like whatever place that is, just put a hundred percent into it. And I'm trying to, trying to be better, be better at that all the time. I appreciate you sharing that. That's very powerful. I, you know, my, I've known my wife for 13 years and she's Bulgarian and we've gone back to Bulgaria every single year and I'm on my way over there now. And, you know, before I would only go at maximum for two weeks because I needed to get back to the restaurant and, Now I'm going to go for the entire month of July, which is a complete shift for me. But that's me making the commitment, knowing that if I'm hosting a digital hospitality podcast and I'm talking that all you need is internet access from the village, then (laughs) literally I should be able to communicate with my team who I've got an incredible team in place, but I should also be able to do the things that I want to do, but more importantly, spend the time with my kids while they're young. Yeah. I'm going to blink my eyes and they're going to be 11, like you talked about, or seven. (sighs) I mean, it's going to be just a matter, it'll be a matter of time. And, uh, oh, yeah. you know, the restaurants will come, the ghost kitchens will come, the, all the other opportunities, but it's so important just to, you know, if you're listening to this now, like right now, this is what you're supposed to hear. You know, we're all exactly where we're supposed to be. And that that's hard when you have hopes and dreams and you're entrepreneurial and you want to build your business or grow your company or get the next round of funding or whatever your, whatever that goal is. You know, it's so it's so hard not to be just present and be grateful for being present. So, Josh, I'm I'm so thankful that you reached out. Uh, you know, we talk about stay curious, get involved, and ask for help. Uh, you're you got involved. You know, you've gotten involved. Uh, you've become you've been part of the digital hospitality community. You've been listening, but more importantly, now you've reached out and we've created a friendship. Um, I'm grateful. I know Stover, my producer, uh, Ian, our lead writer. Uh, Toby, that's part of the our digital hospitality media team. But like I said, we we bring the team on now on Clubhouse. We used to have those calls on Zoom, but you know we hope that you're on that call on Friday yeah. and anybody in your organization. And we just want to have stories about the things that we've learned during the week about our smartphone, um, how to do things better, something cool that we heard on another Clubhouse room, something we heard in a podcast, a cool idea, something that went wrong, and then uh, you know hopefully the next week we can come back with more stories, more lessons and stories. So um, how can people find you, Josh? Uh, at Pickles and Bones BBQ uh, on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, those are our two most, two most active platforms. The Pickles and Bones podcast is available on wherever podcasts are consumed these days. I, um, it's on all those and those will start, uh, you should start seeing one a week starting this Thursday. Um, and awesome. Tom and I will be on there and then we're gonna be looking for other guests. So. Uh, DM us if you're interested in coming on the podcast. I'm going to learn how to uh, to record on Zoom like this. And uh, I'd love to get some other people from across the country uh, to just get in and start, uh, you know, building a network and making friends with other people. We're all in the same place. We're all going through the same stuff together. That's awesome. I appreciate that. And if you're listening to this podcast, uh, recently I've had people, I've had, I've been helping people for a long time with uh, helping them with their media, turning their business into a media company, um, but I've launched my own coaching program. So if you're interested in that, uh, please reach out. Um, I will do a free coaching call with you and let you know what we can do um, to help you better tell stories on your smartphone, whether it's you, whether it's anyone in your organization, um, the call is open and available. Um, We appreciate you. Please uh, share digital hospitality with your friends. And like I said, I hope to see you on Clubhouse if you're listening to this. Um, Get in on the action and uh, stay curious, get involved and Don't be afraid to ask for help.